Right, uh, today, so today we are going to discuss another important concept in the gaseous state, which is called principle of EQ partition energy. See, this principle is very important because it finds its application in various fields of chemistry, especially the physical chemistry, energy and the time. See, there are three important physical entities which the people wanted to understand right from the time memorial. Energy, time, and the space. Even the quantum mechanics is trying to relate these three physical entities, energy, time, and the space. So when you discuss the energy, how the energy is getting divided among various modes of the energy possessions by the bodies, that is very important. So the principle of EQ partition energy, which is explaining how the total energy of the system is divided into various modes of energies that are possessed by a system. So the very statement of the principle of EQ partition energy is this. It is the total energy of a molecule. The total energy of the molecule is divided equally among the different degrees of freedom of the molecule. So in the previous classes, we have already seen what are degrees of freedom. See, the gaseous molecules are not stationary. They are all in a continuous state of motion. They move here and there. They may rotate. They may vibrate. So they are all doing all these motions. Now these motions can also be resolved into several components. When you take the Cartesian coordinate system into consideration, see the translational motion, that is the molecule as a whole moving here and there. This a translational motion. Can you pass? Yes, pa. Yes. So the total energy of the molecule is divided equally among the different degrees of freedom of the molecule. So translational motion can be divided into three components. Their motion among uh, uh, in the x direction, the motion in the y direction, the motion in the z direction. So each mode, each component of a kinetic motion, each component of a kinetic motion. See, look here, watch closely. Each component of the kinetic motion contributes equally to the total kinetic energy of the system. So each mode contributes an amount of half kT per molecule or half RT per mole. So this point you should understand. See K is the Boltzmann's constant. Half Boltzmann's constant into temperature per molecule. If you take one molecule, what is the contribution of each mode of the motion? It is half kT. If you take one mole of a molecule, then half kT into Avogadro number will give you the value for one mole of the molecule. Hence, half kT into Avogadro number. Avogadro number multiplied by the Boltzmann's constant will give you universal gas, gas constant RT. So that is equal to half RT per molecule. So now look, 
the translational motion i have already explained what is a translational motion translational motion is the motion of the entire molecule motion of the entire molecule so along the x direction half kt this is one mode along the y direction half kt this is another mode along the z direction half kt that is at another mode so totally 3 by 2 kt is the contribution of the translation motion in the total energy of the system 3 by 2 kt is the contribution of the energy of the system pertaining to translational motion suppose if you take rotational motion for linear molecules there are two rotations why there are two rotations i have already explained if you take a linear molecule if you assume all the three axes as the axis of rotation that axis which lies in the bond suppose if the molecule is lying in the x axis then rotation about the x axis will carry negligible moment of inertia so when the negligible amount of moment of inertia is there then the energy required for rotation about that axis will be zero therefore that particular rotation is omitted so the other rotations the other two axes the molecules are rotated with a particular energy hence the rotational <coughs> degrees of freedom for linear molecule is 2 so the rotational contribution to the total energy is 2 into half kt but in the case of non linear molecules it is 3 into half kt because non linear molecules can be rotated about all the three axes <coughs> so in the case of a vibrational motion now look watch closely each vibrational motion has two components one is called the potential component and the other one is called the kinetic component but this thing is not true in the case of translation motion or rotational motion vibrational component vibrational motion alone has two components because it is something like a stretching a spring or a compressing a spring when you stretch a spring what happens the energy is stored in the spring in the form of a potential energy and when the spring is left the spring it tries to relax at a faster rate hence the relaxing effect is the kinetic mode so then it has a kinetic energy when the kinetic energy increases potential energy decreases when potential energy increases kinetic energy decreases so at the extreme positions the energy is a totally potential in the equilibrium position the energy is a totally kinetic so the kinetic component and the potential component there are two modes of vibrational uh, motion so each component contributes an amount of <coughs> half kt to the total energy and the kinetic component contributes half kt to the total energy hence each mode of vibration contributes an amount of kt to the total energy of the system so it is kt kt to the total energy of the system so what happens every mode of vibration contributes the amount kt to the total energy of the system so now see in the next slide we see suppose you take a gas let me say the translational motion there are n1 
in the rotational motion there are n2 components in the vibrational motion there are n3 components so if you look at the total energy of the system look at the total energy of the system n1 so each component half kt so n1 into half kt then n2 the rotational contribution n2 into half kt plus vibrational contribution again each vibration has two contributions therefore n3 into kt here you are not substituting half kt it is a full kt because each mode of vibration contributes two components one is a potential component another one is vibrational component so total energy is equal to n1 kt by 2 plus n2 kt by 2 plus n3 kt so this is the total energy of the system look at the hydrogen molecule see the hydrogen is a linear molecule so it has three translational motions as it is linear two rotational motions in order to find out the vibrational motions so we have calculated or we have deduced this equation 3 into number of atoms minus translational motion and the rotational motion therefore it comes around 5 so 3 into number of atoms how many atoms are there in the hydrogen 2 so 3 into 2 minus 5 is equal to 1 so it has only one vibrational state so i can calculate the total energy of the system translational energy plus rotational energy plus vibrational energy which is equal to 3 into that is a 3 translational motion into half kt plus a 2 into half kt plus there is only one vibrational mode and one mode contributes two things one is potential component and the kinetic component so plus kt so totally we have 7 by 2 kt per molecule so if you take water molecule it has a translational motion 3 that is along x direction y direction and z rotation also 3 because it is a non linear molecule so vibration is 3 into number of atoms 3 minus translational and rotational motion 6 therefore there are three modes of vibration we have already seen what are normal modes of vibration and where are these three modes so energy of the system is three translation into half kt plus three rotation into half kt plus three into kt the vibrational contribution totally six kt per molecule similarly if you take a carbon dioxide molecule even though carbon dioxide molecule has only th uh, three atoms like water this is a linear molecule whereas water is a non-linear molecule again translation three rotation two because it is a linear molecule so the rotation about that axis which passes through the bond c o o c o bond that bond is negligible because it possesses negligible moment of inertia so vibrational contribution three into three atoms minus the translational motion and the rotational motion five so there are four modes of vibration so total energy is three into half kt two into half kt plus four into kt so totally 13 by 2 kt is the total energy of the carbon dioxide molecule so this is how the total energy of the gaseous systems are calculated i think you are able to understand so next thing what is the heat capacity of the ideal gas how to calculate the heat capacity of the ideal gas so look here it is the born oppenheimer approximation what is born oppenheimer approximation the total energy of a system is equal to translational energy rotational energy vibrational energy and electronic energy so when you sum up all these energies you are getting the total energy of the system 
this is born oppenheimer approximation but when you want to know the quantity of these energy modes electronic energy is the highest vibrational energy is next to it rotational energy is a smaller than that translation energy is the least among them so normally translational motion they it automatically takes place rotational motion is observed in microwave energies vibrational energy is observed in infrared energies but electronic transition is observed in visible and ultraviolet energy that is why in order to record the spectrum rotational spectra is recorded in microwave region vibrational spectra is recorded in infrared region whereas electronic spectra is observed or is recorded in ultraviolet and visible region so it's all energy gap now if you take an atomic gas what are atomic gases all the noble gases are atomic gases why they are called atomic gases because they are stable in the atomic form itself each atom is stable see helium atom we do not write a helium 2 but we write a hydrogen 2 h2 because a hydrogen is stable when it is present as a diatomic molecule but noble gases they exist as atomic molecule because in the atom form itself they have a completed tuplet in the case of helium and a completed octet in the case of other noble gases like neon argon krypton xenon and radon so the noble gases they can they are atomic gases so they can be considered as a single particle so when you take a single particle it has a translational motion and each translation has half kt contribution their translation can take place in three axes so the contribution is a 3 by 2 kt that's all they do not have any they do not show any rotational motion or vibrational motion because the moment of inertia in all the three rotational axes for a single particle is negligible negligible similarly a single particle cannot vibrate because it is not having any bond at all so the single particle has only translational motion and also the translational motion can be in three modes three directions x and y and z so the total energy of a translational motion or the total energy of the system in the case of a single particle is a 3 by 2 kt so this 3 by 2 kt is the total energy of a single particle or an atomic gas this is called a clausius statement clausius statement suppose a molecule has n atoms that is n atomic molecules see oxygen is diatomic molecule ozone is a triatomic molecule carbon dioxide is a triatomic molecule um anything else nitrogen dioxide is a triatomic molecule if n is the atomicity if n atomic molecule is considered linear molecule will have 3n minus 5 vibrational contribution non linear molecule will have 3n minus 6 contribution so in such cases if you take the heat capacity of the system at a constant volume cv you know in the thermodynamics itself we have studied cv is equal to do e by do t at a constant volume which can be written as cv total that is the total heat capacity at a constant volume is equal to heat capacity at a constant volume with respect to translation that is t cv translational cv rotational and cv vibrational so cv translational cv rotational and tv cv vibrational each degree of freedom it contributes an amount of half kt and each vibrational degree of freedom contributes an amount of kt so an approximation is made that at room temperature 
the contribution to the cv from 